How's it going everybody? Too spooky here. With season 2 of the anime on the horizon and officially getting caught up with the manga myself, it's finally time we count down 101 facts about Jujutsu Kaisen. When it comes to what information to expect within this video, we'll be covering everything that has to do with obscure or generally unknown information about the series, its creator, its characters, its history and production, and more. Before we begin, take note that there is a spoiler warning for content found within both the anime and manga. However, when it comes to spoilers involving specific plot points found in the manga, I will make sure to provide an extra warning within the video. Either way, proceed at your own risk. Additionally, my pronunciation is god-awful, so warning for your ears too. Without any more delay, let's jump right into it. Number 1 Jujutsu Kaisen officially began on March 5th of 2018 and is currently ongoing. Serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump and written by Gege Akutami. Before its initial serialization, Jujutsu Kaisen was actually a four-chapter one-shot series called Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical School that released in Jump Giga from April 28th of 2017 to July 28th of the same year. Gege never had any intention of turning Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical School into any sort of serialization, but it proved to be such a popular one-shot series that the serialization committee gave unanimous approval. And thinking it would actually be easier to build off an existing idea rather than try making a serialization concept from scratch, Gege decided to go along with it. Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical School would then become Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, serving as a prequel to the series. While it started out relatively well perceived from the get-go, Jujutsu Kaisen would quickly become insanely popular. And as of August of 2022, the series currently has 70 million copies in circulation, which is absolutely unprecedented for a manga that has only existed for five years. Now that it's 2023, I bet that number is definitely much higher too. In the process of making this video, it turns out I'm actually correct! Because now, as of June of 2023, the series currently has 80 million copies in circulation. Number 2. The author of Jujutsu Kaisen, Gege Akutami, is shrouded in quite a bit of mystery, as their name is just a pen name. They chose Akutami because it sounds close to the word garbage, which is Akuta, although before picking that pen name, they also considered choosing Dokudami Milk. Although it's quite common for people to assume their gender as he, him in interviews and such, Gege's gender is currently unknown. In fact, it's quite possible they could be she, her, or even they, them. Gege uses a one-eyed cat avatar to promote themselves, and back in 2015 after the release of their one-shot, Number 9, they drew a woman taking off the cat costume to illustrate themselves, furthering the mystery of their gender identity. One thing to note, however, is that Gege has mentioned in interviews that they once attended an all-boys school. But as we know, that doesn't outright confirm their actual gender as he, him. In fact, they refer to themselves commonly with Watashi, which is gender neutral. Additionally, the one time Gege has been seen publicly was on television, following the monthly manga variety show, Mando Kobayashi, selecting Jujutsu Kaisen as the 2020 Grand Prize winner, where Gege appeared donning a full Mechamaru cosplay. Number 3. As far as what we do know about Gege, they were born on February 26th of 1992 in Japan's Iwate Prefecture. They initially discovered their love for manga in fourth grade when they discovered Bleach. Gege always wanted to read Shonen Jump, but their parents wouldn't buy them one at that age and their older brother was so possessive of their belongings that they would never let them read their magazines. So one day, when their brother was away, they snuck a peek at one of their Shonen Jump magazines, which just happened to be the issue that Bleach's first chapter debuted in. Gege was so blown away by Bleach that it really opened their eyes to just how impressive mangaka can be. The following year, after moving to Sendai in Miyagi Prefecture, a class friend of theirs introduced them to the concept of drawing manga for fun. So after mimicking their style, Gege soon developed their dream of becoming a mangaka. And the quest to achieve that dream would officially begin a few years later, after they initially sent a draft into Shonen Jump as a bit of a joke, thinking they wouldn't get any feedback. But the editor who reviewed their work actually wrote back and said they had a lot of talent and potential. Fast forwarding to 2012, Gege would attempt to get their first completed work published in the magazine Aoharu, 
but the magazine apparently ignored them, so they gave up on that. Then, in 2014, Gege would begin their manga career as an assistant for Yasuhiro Kano on the manga Kiss X Death. That same year, they would release their first one-shot in Shonen Jump Next, Kamishiro Sosa, a story about a giant lid covering an island and the two officers from the Hondo Police's God Weapon Control Division that are sent to investigate it. They would then release two one-shots at the beginning and end of 2015, both titled Number 9. The first of which introduced us to Nine, and their supernatural entity that followed them around, with the second one-shot following the same character in a new story and setting. With the inclusion of a magic system along with supernatural entities, the groundwork from what would later become Jujutsu Kaisen was already in the works. In October of 2016, Gege would release another one-shot titled Nikai Bongai Baru Baru Jira, which involves a weaponless world that becomes engulfed with kaiju that humanity is seemingly defenseless against. As far as writing these one-shots go, Gege was apparently most influenced by and referenced a lot of short stories from Haruko Ichikawa and Tomoko Yamashita. Then, like we mentioned earlier, following those one-shots, what would later become Jujutsu Kaisen Zero would debut in April of 2017, and the rest is history. Number 4 when it comes to inspirations, Jujutsu Kaisen is primarily and heavily inspired by Bleach, Hunter x Hunter, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. But the horror aspect of the series comes from Gege's love for scary media. In various interviews, the scary media in question has been identified as horror manga authors like Junji Ito, movies like Get Out, Hereditary, Sadako vs. Kayako, and numerous found footage movies from the late 2000s while inspirations for the story namely come from Buddhist, Biblical, and Japanese mythology. In terms of their art style, Gege has mentioned that the biggest inspirations for their art came from Yoshihiro Togashi, Yusuke Murata, Masashi Kishimoto, and Taite Kubo. Although, Gege tries to create art as similar as possible to Togashi's, which if you look at a comparison, you can certainly see the inspiration. Number 5 before what would become Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was conceived, Gege was experiencing a great deal of writer's block at the beginning of 2017, which came about after reading My Hero Academia and Hinomaru Sumo, being impressed with both works and doubting their own abilities to create something that could stand beside them in the magazine. After eventually finding some inspiration, Gege presented a prototype of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero to their editor at the time, who convinced them to recontextualize it to a school setting as it was way too dark in their opinion, which Gege was pretty upset about, but ultimately obliged. Yuta and Rika were the first two characters created and the only two characters from the prototype that transitioned over to the final product. And the real challenge became creating sorcerers who were strong enough to stop Yuta and Rika from killing people. A few notable differences from the final product would be that Maki was originally meant to recruit Yuta rather than Gojo, and Yuta's sister was also meant to make an appearance before being killed by Rika out of a jealous rage. While developing the concept, Gege and their editor consistently butted heads around almost every corner. Gege already gave in to that demand about changing it to a school setting, but that apparently wasn't enough, as their editor also pushed for many other things to be added or changed. The biggest example provided was Rika being replaced completely, wanting a much darker, well-known individual, suggesting the real-life historical figure Oda Nobunaga from the Sengoku period. Which was an absolute no for Gege, as Yuta's relationship with Rika was basically the sole focus. However, in an attempt to appease their editor, Gege added reference to another historical figure, Michizane Sugawara, as Gojo and Yuta's distant predecessor. This constant clash of ideals led to Gege's editor being replaced after only the first chapter. And after all was said and done, Gege believes they should have kept their original concept to this very day. Number 6. Once Jujutsu Kaisen was greenlit for serialization, Gege found themselves at a bit of a crossroads regarding the main character. Yuta was originally going to continue over from Volume Zero as the protagonist for the main series as well. However, the entire point of Volume Zero was just to be a short story to explore Yuta's character arc. And considering it was never meant to be a serialization in the first place, 
Gege felt that Yuta's character was already too fleshed out for new readers, starting solely at the beginning of the new story. Instead, opting to create Yuji and move Yuta to a supporting character who would return later on in the manga. This is still seen as a bit of a controversial decision to some, as many critics believe that Yuta was the far better choice for a main character. That said, both Yuji and Yuta have many similarities to keep the same tone, such as their introduction to Jujutsu, being plagued with a curse that is out of their control to an extent, being faced with death, personal tragedy, and so on. But both of them are also fundamentally different in terms of personality to differentiate them in that regard. Yuji being much more extroverted, while Yuta is much more introverted, for instance. Gege's one regret with this change would be that they wished Yuji would have been a more popular character with readers and critics overall. Number 7. Following the success of the serialization, an anime adaptation was first announced in late 2019. The first season of the anime then officially debuted on October 3rd of 2020 and ran weekly until March 27th of 2021. Adapted by Studio Mappa and directed by Sung Ho Park. Needless to say, the anime was a massive success, receiving praise from fans and critics alike for its vibrant yet horrific style, its intense fight scenes, incredible character design, and overall immaculate direction. The anime even won Anime of the Year at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards in 2021, along with multiple other awards throughout 2021 and 2022. With a successful first season, it's no surprise that a second season was announced at the beginning of 2022, this time with Shota Gosazono directing. The first episode of Season 2 will officially be premiering on July 6th of 2023, picking up right where the anime left off with the flashback arc of Gojo and Geto's past, and ending the season with the Shibuya Incident. Number 8. Directly after Season 1 of the anime, it was announced that Jujutsu Kaisen Zero was also receiving an adaptation in the form of an anime movie, once again adapted by Studio Mappa and directed by Park. The film additionally featured original content not present in the manga, namely expanding the relationship between Gojo and Geto, along with an original ending, among other additions. But to fit that two-hour time constraint, some elements were also left out of the film. Namely, speeding up Yuta's character arc and giving the side characters a little bit less screen time. The movie would then hit Japanese theaters on Christmas Eve of 2021, later being released in theaters for North America and most of Europe on March 18th of 2022, and also saw select releases throughout India, China, and Malaysia. Now let me preface, this film was incredibly successful. Worldwide, it brought in $196.2 million at the box office, making it the fifth highest grossing R-rated animated film of all time, the sixth highest grossing anime film of all time, and the ninth highest grossing Japanese film of all time. It received praise from fans and critics alike, namely for the themes, incredible animation, and breathtaking direction once again. And much like the first season of the anime, the film won numerous awards, including Best Film of the Year at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. Number 9. Originally, the events of Volume Zero were supposed to be adapted in the first season of the anime. Director Park commented that the original plan was to adapt Yuji's introduction to the Jujutsu world for the first three episodes, before switching over to Yuta and the events of Volume Zero, and then pivoting back to Yuji after those events were fully adapted. However, this idea was tossed aside because they felt it would ultimately interrupt the flow of the story a little too much. That said, Park and the rest of the animation team were still very eager to adapt the events of Volume Zero in general, and instead of finding a break in the anime to make it happen, they eventually came up with the idea of adapting it in a tight two-hour film format. Number 10. For the release of the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie in Japan, a booklet called Jujutsu Kaisen 0.5, Tokyo Perfectual Jujutsu High School was given to theatergoers, which contained an exclusive original nine-page chapter from Gege that covered the daily life of Yuta and the other first-year students, an interview with Gege, an interview with the cast and anime staff, along with character designs from the film. Number 11. To put into perspective just how popular Jujutsu Kaisen really is, Let's do a quick history of the sales. Beginning serialization in March of 2018, the series had about 2.5 million copies in circulation a year and a half later in November of 2019. Already quite impressive selling that much within less than two years, but 2020 is where the series really exploded. By October of 2020, the series had 10 million copies in circulation and even went completely out of print for a brief period as a result. This means that the series increased sales by 400% in just one year. 
Then, in March of 2021, a now full three years after the start of serialization, the series had 40 million copies in circulation, only increasing by the tens of millions until we stop with a current total of more than 80 million as of 2023. So, what exactly happened? Well, there appears to be numerous factors. First and foremost, Jujutsu Kaisen was slowly growing in popularity within Japan since its debut, which made up all 2.5 million copies in circulation by the end of 2019. That said, the hype for Jujutsu Kaisen was also beginning for people in the West, as Shonen Jump released their Shonen Jump app which featured the series in English for the first time officially at the beginning of 2019. Then, with the turn of the decade in 2020, multiple things happened all at once. COVID happened, which forced the entire world to a stop, meaning more people had time to read since everyone was stuck inside for a while. And lo and behold, when all that went down, Jujutsu Kaisen just released physically in English. Accompany this with a successful anime adaptation dropping in 2020 as well, and it shows that all the pieces fit into place for the series to absolutely explode in popularity, making Jujutsu Kaisen the next big series for the entire manga and anime-consuming world. Number 12. As far as Yuji's conception goes, Gege based Yuji's personality after their brother, as Gege considers their brother to be their complete opposite, somebody who succeeds at everything they try. Sports, studying, you name it. His name was also meant to further reflect his personality, as Yuji translates to abundant, help, and brave, with the kanji for G emphasizing caring for others. Apparently one of Gege's former classmates had this name, and their parents put so much thought into its meaning that Gege figured they could borrow it, while Itadori is taken from the Japanese knotweed, which is used in various pain relievers, further symbolizing his deeply caring nature. Various aspects of Yuji were also inspired by Naruto, as his uniform was directly inspired from Naruto's with the wide collar, and as Gege puts it, edgy style. Though, Yuji's choice of hoodie is supposed to additionally symbolize his indecisiveness, as Yuji doesn't even really care for hoodies, apparently. <laughs> While Yuji's entire situation of being Sukuna's host and the prejudice and fear that comes along with that being inspired from Naruto having the nine-tailed fox demon within him. Additionally, his decision to continue collecting Sukuna's fingers for the greater good of the world before sacrificing his life was inspired from Breaking Bad. Number 13. Gege apparently had plans to completely kill off Yuji following Sukuna ripping his heart out pretty early on in the series. However, they were only going to go through with this plan had the serialization been performing poorly. Instead, thinking they could shift the focus to Megumi for the remainder of the serialization to try and get some of that popularity back. This was namely because Yuji is the type of character that Gege wouldn't get along with personally, and they were content with killing them off if need be. Luckily, the serialization proved to be popular soon after, so Yuji was brought back to life pretty much immediately. Number 14. Megumi's conception was to essentially be a direct foil to Yuji and Nobara in terms of personality and knowledge. For standard shonen archetypes, Megumi would generally fall in line as the typical rival archetype. But Gege insists he was created solely to become good friends with Yuji and Nobara and help mentor them, therefore being given a much more introverted and gloomy personality with emphasis on his knack for strategy. To further contrast Yuji in particular, Megumi is generally much more saddened by the death of an animal or one of his shikigami, and doesn't feel much at all towards a person who suffers the same fate. Whereas Yuji cares immensely about people and would be much more depressed about losing someone, be it a friend, family, or even a complete stranger. Megumi's name was also chosen to represent his personality, as Megumi is generally a feminine name that means blessing or grace. Number 15. Nobara's conception centered around the idea of a character who is completely true to themselves, which Gege felt would once again contrast well with Megumi and Yuji. Notably in the sense that Nobara knows exactly who they are, and won't compromise her ideals or try to meet others' expectations. As a result, Nobara's dialogue is the easiest for Gege to write out of the entire main cast, and Gege claims they were meant to be the strongest of the three main protagonists although they struggle with her composure in action scenes. Gege additionally felt it would be really fun to write her desire to go to Tokyo against her grandmother's wishes of a small town life, and contrast her humble upbringing against the reality of city living. 
Therefore, her name was also created to explicitly reflect her personality, with Nobara meaning thorny, and the kanji for no and bara meaning wild and rose respectively, and the kanji for kugi meaning nail or peg to represent her personality being both rebellious and refined. Number 16. Gojo was created for the sole purpose of being one of the most powerful characters in the series, while still being easy to understand for readers. His name was directly taken from the distant family tree of Michizane Sugawara. Since, like we mentioned earlier, Sugawara was listed as Gojo and Yuta's distant ancestor to appease Gege's former editor. Personality-wise, Gojo was meant to be pretty full of themselves, while indifferent to authority and tradition. Because of this, Gege often struggles to write Gojo's dialogue. In fact, it's no secret that Gege absolutely hates Gojo, and loathes that he is such a popular character, viewing him as a general hindrance to the story and plot development as a whole. For examples of this hatred, in late 2019 to early 2020, Gege's author comments in the Shonen Jump magazine consisted of things like this. Something Satoru Gojo doesn't have. Probably a personality. The recent Jujutsu Kaisen chapters have been all about How many times did you say Satoru Gojo? And once Gojo was finally sealed, now that Gojo is gone, it looks like 2020 is gonna be a good year. In terms of manga sales and series popularity, it certainly was a f***ing good year, I tell ya what. With so much hate for Gojo, it's no wonder they were taken out of the manga for so long. Additionally, since Gojo is such a popular character among women, it's important to note that Gege claims it's impossible to write Gojo in any sort of romantic relationship whatsoever, because there's no way he'd ever be faithful towards his partner. So Gojo would 100% cheat on you and feel nothing. Like this that. is your man. Yes. Look at the screen. That's mine. And uh -huh. that's what you're gonna settle for. I'm gonna stick beside him. The bar is so low, it's in the ground, people. As far as his design goes, Gojo was intentionally designed with the Bai Shonen archetype in mind, which basically means extremely youthful, androgynous beauty. And the concept of having bandages over his eyes came from the Naruto character, Tonbo Tobitake. And for the record, Gege promises that Gojo was not inspired by Kakashi in any way. Gege also decided to change his bandages from Volume 0 to a regular blindfold so they didn't have to tediously draw the bandages every week. Number 17. The series was originally named Jutai Titan, but since Jujutsu needed to be included, it then became Jujutsu Sozen, with the idea in mind being that Sozen represents the vicious cycle of malevolence and revenge, only bringing about more malevolence and revenge via curses. But apparently the kanji for Sozen was too difficult, and the series therefore became known as Jujutsu Kaisen, as the kanji for Kai is meant to symbolize a cycle. Number 18. Following the series being serialized, Gege made sure to change the hairstyles of Yuta and Inumaki from how they appeared in the events of Volume 0, as they felt Yuta's hairstyle resembled Megumi's, and Inumaki's hairstyle resembled Yuji's a little too much, and didn't want readers to confuse who was who as a result. Number 19. Sukuna in general is based off of the mythological Sukuna mentioned in the Nihon Shoki, a document compiled by the Imperial Family of Japan in 720, during the Nara period. That Sukuna had two faces, four arms, and an extra pair of legs. They were said to have been at least three meters tall and capable of wielding a bow and arrow and swords with superhuman strength. Killing thousands, refusing to submit to the Emperor, feared throughout the land, and even being worshipped by some as a guardian deity. The Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen having four arms and two faces is the direct inspiration from this story. And while other story beats from the mythological Sukuna are implemented within the manga, Gege mentioned that they are only loosely based on the mythological Sukuna, namely because they didn't want to get anything wrong with the historical lore. And instead, most of Sukuna's legend within the manga is based on various occult forums and message boards from the early 2000s that Gege frequented. In general, Sukuna was developed to be the cruel, narcissistic, depraved, arrogant, and straight-up evil force within the story, having no morals whatsoever and willing to kill anyone for no reason at all. Number 20. Geto was created to illustrate prejudice and be a direct foil to Gojo, being heavily inspired by Shinobu Sensui from Yu Yu Hakusho. That said, while Gege greatly sympathized with Sensui as their character arc progressed, Gege didn't feel the same way about Geto while writing them. Geto's foil to Gojo was namely to represent how Gojo was a natural-born prodigy, while Geto achieved his genius through hard work. 
furthering this juxtaposition through Geto's design, by intentionally having him wear a Gojo Gesa, which is a specific type of Buddhist monk robe to connect him to Gojo even further with the name. Geto's fake occupation as a monk in a false religious organization was meant to illustrate his darkness even further, as monks are generally seen as trustworthy figures while Geto himself is the exact opposite. With all that thought put into Geto's conception, it's a bit funny to note that Geto's name is simply taken from the Geto Kogen Ski Resort, as Gege just really liked the name. Number 21. Mahito was conceived similarly to Sukuna, in the fact that they are just inherently evil and twisted. With both Mahito and Sukuna for that matter, Gege wanted to avoid the but deep down they're a really great guy trope. Instead, Mahito genuinely just wants humans to suffer as much as possible. Gege even sympathizes with Mahito to an extent, because in their opinion, humans have caused a lot of suffering throughout history, so Mahito wanting them to suffer in return isn't exactly wrong when you think about all the atrocities. In that sense, Gege compares them most to Thanos from the MCU, as Gege feels you can't exactly hate them for their justification at the end of the day. Number 22. In addition to the manga and anime, two original light novels have been created for the series, both of which were written by Balad Kitaguni. The first one, called Jujutsu Kaisen Summer of Ashes Autumn of Dust, debuted on May 1st of 2019, and the second, called Jujutsu Kaisen Thorny Road at Dawn, debuted on January 4th of 2020. Both light novels follow the existing characters along with a couple new ones in various short stories. As of April 25th of 2023, both light novels have also been released in English, so you can officially check them out if you're interested. Number 23. The interesting thing about Jujutsu Kaisen's setting would be that the main story officially begins in June of 2018, with the world itself being pretty much an alternate reality that is the exact same as our real world in 2018, aside from, you know, curses and Jujutsu sorcerers and stuff like that. Because of that, many of the series that inspired Jujutsu Kaisen actually exist within the story, as there are multiple references to Bleach, Naruto, Yu Yu Hakusho, Dragon Ball, and more existing within the story. So history itself, along with anything and anyone that existed in 2018, is pretty much canon to exist within Jujutsu Kaisen. Additionally, according to the Jujutsu Kaisen data book, Inumaki's hobby is watching YouTube videos, his favorite genre being mukbang videos. So, as a YouTuber myself, I was making quite a bit of content back in 2018, which includes making videos on anime like Bleach, Naruto, etc. Therefore, even I am technically canon within Jujutsu Kaisen lore. Number 24. Gojo is a fan of Digimon, as he even references both Metal Greymon and Skull Greymon. To take that even further, both Gojo's Japanese and English voice actor have voiced characters in the Digimon anime. Yuji Nakamura voiced Chaismon, and Kaiji Tang voiced Kyotaro Yamada, respectively. Number 25. Speaking of Naruto, Gege has mentioned that the one big trope from Naruto that won't be appearing in Jujutsu Kaisen is the Talk No Jutsu. Or in this case, Talk No Jujutsu. As they claim that the examples where Naruto speaks with their current enemy to make peace with them simply won't happen against characters like Sakuna, for instance. As Sakuna is so evil that it's nearly impossible for them to accept love from anyone, and therefore it's impossible for them to ever atone for their sins. Number 26. So far, three popularity polls have been conducted for the series, the first of which took place in 2019, with a total of 163,066 votes placed overall. The top five consisted of Nanami in fifth place with 11,644 votes, Inumaki in fourth place with 12,088 votes, Gojo in third place with 16,923 votes, Megumi in second place with 21,193 votes, and finally Yuji in first with 21,735 votes. The second popularity poll then took place in 2022, with a total of 97,860 votes placed overall. The top five now consisted of Nanami once again in fifth place with 5,548 votes, Geto moving up to fourth place with 10,345 votes, Yuji falling to third place with 13,265 votes, Gojo moving up to second place with 14,359 votes, and Megumi taking first with 19,393 votes. 
The third popularity poll results actually released while finishing up this video, this time with a total of 96,704 votes. My boy Yuta now taking 5th place with 2,942 votes, Ghetto holding 4th place with 6,487 votes, Gojo falling to 3rd place with 11,591 votes, Yuji rising to 2nd place with 24,038 votes, and Megumi strongly holding 1st with 30,059 votes. Number 27. Back in 2021, a smartphone game titled Jujutsu Kaisen Phantom Parade was announced to be in the works by Sumzap. Other than being a RPG based on the series and featuring its prominent characters, not much else is known about it at the moment. It was intended to be released in 2022, however, it's been delayed multiple times, and is now expected to release sometime in spring or summer of 2023. As of making this video, no official release date has been listed. In addition to that, while making this video, the game Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash was announced at Anime Expo. It'll basically be a 3D fighting game with one-on-one -on -one and tag team battles, featuring over 15 playable characters from the series. Not much else is known about it at this time, and no release date was given, but it will be coming to PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X S, and Nintendo Switch. Number 28. Beginning in 2022 and ending during the summer of 2023, Universal Studios Japan featured Jujutsu Kaisen in an experience called Jujutsu Kaisen The Real 4D, in which there was an original 20-minute animation that played and gave the viewers an interactive 4D experience. Along with that, they also hosted the existing ride, Hollywood Dream, with Jujutsu Kaisen allowing riders to pick a song that they can ride along to, additionally featuring many Jujutsu Kaisen-themed foods, snacks, and merch throughout the park. Number 29. Jujutsu Kaisen also had a limited-time collaboration with a popular spa, the Raku Spa Garden, in 2021, where you could read the manga while you relax, enjoy many different Jujutsu Kaisen-themed foods and snacks, pick up some exclusive merch, and get the premium spa experience all while you do. As you can imagine, there have also been a lot more collaborations than this. Like, just look at this collaboration they had with Dolce and Gabbana. Number 30. When Gege goes about creating a character, they generally start by looking at character archetypes that commonly fall under the shonen genre, as they are the most likely personalities to catch the reader's attention for a shonen magazine. Otherwise, some characters begin with their physical aspect alone, Examples being Panda or Inomaki, whereas characters like Gojo start as a concept, his being the epitome of power. And once they start with one of those aspects, they use that as a starting point to create and develop the rest of their character. Number 31. Considering the manga takes place in 2018, many of the background pieces are derived from actual existing buildings. Examples being Shibuya Station and many of the buildings in Shibuya and Tokyo, along with a large ancestral home from the Kodakuda Yu for the Zenin family home, and the inside of the Kode Te for the Zenin family home as well. Number 32. Generally speaking, it takes Gege about half a day to write the initial storyboards for the average chapter, and then maybe five days to complete the entire draft. Apparently, in their own words, their focus is garbage, and they wish they would have known that before becoming a mangaka, because it usually takes them like 12 hours to psych themselves up for any task that would otherwise take like 30 minutes, so focusing on a full draft every week has been very taxing for them. Number 33. In terms of their art, Gege is most self-conscious about the fact that in their opinion, they're incapable of drawing cute or sexy women. I know a lot of people heavily disagree with that, and this thirst edit of Jujutsu Kaisen's women speaks otherwise. I got her smiling with her teeth, she's been coming home to me, I wear her Number 34. During an interview with Jujutsu Kaisen's editor, Tatsuhiku Kadayama, the interviewer asked if Gege is similar in person to any of the characters in the series, to which Kadayama replied that they think Gege is most similar to Gojo. Huh? In the fact that they are cheery and cool. Cheery, but super duper smart. Akutami Sensei reads a lot of novels and watches so many movies. Akutami Sensei is very smart like Gojo as well. 
Although this interview took place in mid-2019, after learning how strongly Gege feels about Gojo earlier in the video, this low-key has to be genuinely one of the most insulting things anyone has ever said to them, and not even realized it. Number 35. Back in 2022, an official Jujutsu Kaisen stage play ran in July and August at the Galaxy Theater in Tokyo. The play was very well received, but has not yet returned for a second run. And I gotta say, a lot of various popular anime and manga end up with stage plays at some point, and they always knock it out of the park with the costumes. Live action anime and manga could definitely learn a thing or two from them. Number 36. During the death painting arc, when Megumi was facing off against the Finger Bearer, this was the very first time in his entire life that Megumi laughed out loud. That is actually extremely depressing. Number 37. When developing the Grasshopper Curse, Gege specifically referenced two books for inspiration, those being When Lonely Grasshoppers Flock Together, The Mutation and Outbreak of the Desert Locust by Dr. Kotaro Uldmeno, and Bear Storm by Akira Yoshimura. Number 38. In a chapter extra featured exclusively within the Shonen Jump magazine, the main cast can be seen dressed up as various One Piece characters, Yuji dressed as Luffy, Nobara as Nami, and Megumi as Chopper. In this extra, they're arguing over who the captain would be, and decide to listen to each other's disposition if they were to be captain. To which Megumi goes first and says that if he is captain, they can hit Gojo as much as they want. Plus, the ship's headpiece is going to be a dog. So naturally, Megumi becomes captain of the Straw Hat Jujutsu Sorcerers. Number 39. There's a bit of a mystery as to whether or not people can see Sukuna's tattoos, or if that's merely represented for the viewer to identify Yuji versus Sukuna. You'd think everyone would blatantly notice Sukuna took over Yuji by the tattoos appearing all over his body and face. But there have been multiple instances where people couldn't tell if Yuji was actually Sukuna, and have to blatantly ask which they are at that moment. Examples being Principal Yaga, Panda, Megumi, and even Gojo. That said, later on in Chapter 111, Jogo made a direct comment about the markings. So the leading theory is that only cursed spirits are able to notice the tattoos when they appear, and humans would otherwise have no idea Sukuna took over based on appearance alone, making them primarily a visual aid for us viewers than anything else. Number 40. Gege originally wanted to make Nanami a villain. Essentially, he would have been working for a shady company that caused a lot of problems for the cast somehow, before eventually becoming a Jujutsu sorcerer and ally. Nanami's entire conception was based on Gege wanting to represent a salaryman quitting their job, and his character, name, and curse technique were all decided within the initial planning stage of the serialization. Number 41. During his training with Gojo, the movies that Yuji watched were The Descent, The Host, the Emperor's Naked Army Marches On, Lord of the Rings, and Leon the Professional, while the movie that Gojo gave spoilers for was Deep Blue. Number 42. Toto as a character was based on Kenpachi Zaraki from Bleach, with the name Toto being chosen because it sounded like the name of a strong person. Toto's battle with Yuji is also a direct reference to Kenpachi's fight against Ichigo, as Kenpachi recognized Ichigo's strength and formed a bond through that during their battle, while Toto formed a bond with Yuji during their fight for his taste in women like Jennifer Lawrence. On that note, Yuji first discovered his love for Jennifer Lawrence by watching The Silver Linings Playbook. Number 43. Cursed energy and cursed techniques in general are clearly heavily inspired by Nen and Nen abilities from Hunter x Hunter, which Gege proudly admits. However, it should be noted that this is simply inspiration instead of a direct copy, as many aspects of both Nen and cursed techniques in particular are very similar and very different. When asked about the inspiration, Gege stated that Nen in general is pretty much the perfect power system, and as a result, when developing something inspired by it, they had to explore fights that dismiss emotional arguments completely, further referencing World Trigger's power system also being created with the general rules from Nen, but developing into its own unique thing with weapons. Now, Gege is trying to do the same by making cursed energy and techniques into its own unique system built upon the same foundations. I dare say with how deep cursed energy can get, Gege has succeeded in that. Number 44. One of the bigger changes in the anime would be how they handled Yuji's reaction to his grandfather's death. The anime added original content to greater signify the importance of their relationship. 
and how his grandfather's death affected Yuji heavily, resulting in the change of his personal priorities to protect others and live a life with meaning, leading him to consume the finger to protect Megumi, and confront Gojo with the goal of consuming all the fingers to save people, overall giving Yuji's character a lot of much-needed development that was absent in the early parts of the manga. With more information about Yuji's extended family coming to light much later in the manga, one of Gige's regrets was not expanding on Yuji's relationship with his grandfather more in the beginning of the manga. Those comments from Gege are likely what led to these changes being added in the anime. Number 45. At the end of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the sound cuts out when Gojo whispers something to Geto to make him smile before killing him off. The phrase Gojo said was, You are my best friend, my one and only. Number 46. At the beginning of chapter 46, Gege drew an illustration of Mahito's group taking a family portrait. Gege is quite the fan of this particular drawing. However, they realized after the fact that cursed spirits are unable to appear in photographs. So, in retrospect, it doesn't actually make sense. Number 47. The first opening, Kai Kai Katan by Eve, came about because the singer was already a fan of the manga. Therefore, when seeking various potential songs for the opening, Eve gave them a 90 second demo, which they promptly chose among all the others. Eve then proceeded to reread the entire manga to influence their writing of the song. It was quite the challenge for them because, in their opinion, their voice was very light. So when director Park requested that things get heavier and darker, they had to shift their tone to create something heavy, dark, and fast-paced. Overall, they claimed this greatly improved their competence as a songwriter by pushing them out of their comfort zone. Number 48. Momo's celebrity crush is Sebastian Stan. Additionally, she is one of the only members from the supporting cast who isn't completely Japanese, and is instead Japanese-American, as her father is American and her mother Japanese. Number 49. Sukuna's corpse was actually already shown at the beginning of Chapter 1 with the color page. It was a small detail not many people paid much attention to initially, as the focus was always on Sukuna's fingers as cursed objects, but never the rest of the body. However, the rest of his body has recently turned up in the manga, confirming that this preview in the color page was in fact accurate. Number 50. Gege claims that Sukuna's fingers taste like soap. I definitely thought they'd taste a lot worse than that, but okay. Anyway, I was out hunting for cursed objects, and just happened across one of these fingers myself. So I'm gonna eat it and let you guys know what it tastes like. I gotta say I'm a little nervous to do this. I haven't eaten a cursed object since my ex-girlfriend, so it's been a while. Well, here goes nothing. does not taste like soap. Oh, ah. Number 51. When developing a cursed spirit based on a disease, Gege decided to go with smallpox and create the smallpox deity. The reason they chose smallpox instead of some other disease is because smallpox is one of the only diseases that has been completely eradicated. And as a result, including it in the story wouldn't be disrespectful to any potential victims of the disease because there aren't any left. Number 52. The birthdays of the main cast are as follows. Yuji was born on March 20th, Megumi was born on December 22nd, Nobara was born on August 7th, and Gojo was born on December 7th. Number 53. Nabuto's character was based on Salvador Dali in terms of appearance and even aspects of their personality. Additionally, Nabuto's hobby is watching anime. At 71 years old, anime rose to fame within his generation, so while we don't know his favorite series or anything, we can assume he's a true weeb at heart. Because of that, he has a great understanding of how anime is made, and it greatly inspired his projection sorcery. It was initially inspired by early film and video, but with the rise of 24 frame animation, he was able to master a more dangerous ability. So Nabuto literally took anime in real life to the next level. Number 54. Gege explained a while back that Gojo's sunglasses are actually just pitch black frames, so if anyone else actually put them on, they wouldn't be able to see a thing. Because of that explanation, it appears as though the anime might have made a bit of a mistake, or at the very least, they made a stylistic choice. As during the trailer for Season 2, there's a shot where you can see Gojo's glasses appear transparent. Number 55. Jogo's black teeth were inspired by a real-life practice called Ohagudo, or teeth blackening. 
most commonly practiced in Southeast Asia, along with Japan and India at certain points throughout history. Within Japan in particular, the practice was quite popular for hundreds of years, until the turn of the 20th century with the end of the Meiji period. It might seem a little odd in modern times, but back then, black teeth were seen as a sign of beauty. Most commonly seen with women, however men also blackened their teeth during those times. In other cultures, the black teeth almost acted as a modern dental sealant, and was done to prevent tooth decay. Number 56. We mentioned earlier how Yuta's sister would have made an appearance in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero had Gege gotten their way. Within Rika's character bio, we learn that Yuta's sister was younger, and was good friends with Rika. However, after becoming a curse, Rika became too violent, which resulted in Yuta distancing himself from his family completely. So while Yuta's sister was originally going to be killed if she appeared, it seems as if her existence and relationship with Rika is still very much part of the story in the background. Additionally, we learned in the data book that Yuta doesn't really interact with the rest of his family, but he still occasionally writes to his sister. Number 57. While it might appear like nonsense, Inumaki's rice ball ingredient speech actually has various meanings. The confirmed ones are as follows. Salmon is used as a general word for affirmation. Fish flakes is used as a general negative connotation. Mustard leaf is used as a worried or concerned connotation. Kelp is used as a general greeting. Tuna mayo is used to specify doing something. Tuna, or tuna tuna, is used to get attention, as in look at something. Spicy cod roe is used for motivational purposes. Salmon roe is used as well well, or who do we have here? Caviar is used for curse words, and everything else is complete gibberish. Number 58. Apparently if Yuji were to eat a death painting, one of two things would happen to him. If he hadn't eaten Sakuna in the first place, but instead ate a death painting, Yuji would simply gain all of its cursed energy and the consciousness of the cursed womb would disappear. And if he consumed one with Sakuna already within him, Sakuna would simply make the consciousness and its accompanied cursed energy disappear. Very recently in chapter 220, Yuji even mentioned eating whatever it takes to kill Sakuna. So it's possible in the coming chapters he might be eating some death paintings or something similar to gain some extra power, I guess we'll have to see. Number 59. Speaking of the death paintings, they were inspired by the Kazozu, which is a series of nine paintings that depict death and the following stages of decomposition for the corpse. Said to have been crafted by Itochi Ie, however the true artist behind these pieces has never been confirmed. Number 60. Geto's Uzumaki technique is a direct reference to Dunji Ito's most popular horror manga, Uzumaki. Not only in name, because when this technique is used, its visual appearance is directly inspired by one of the most famous panels from that manga. Number 61. Utahime could somewhat be seen as a self-insert character for Gege, as within their character profile and within the data book, it claims that she hates Gojo. Mouth. Most of the time. And her main cause of stress is Gojo. So at the very least, if she isn't a self-insert on their part, the two of them would probably get along. Number 62. Nanami was the previous record holder of consecutive black flashes with four in a row. Mentioning this for the first time during a little interview segment during Chapter 50, it was later revealed in a data book that he achieved this record during the night parade of a hundred demons in Kyoto. Therefore, when it came time to animate the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie that depicted the night parade, the animation team made sure to show Nanami's record being set when it was never shown previously. Number 63. The second anime opening was Vivid Vice by Huya Extended. Huya Extended released a limited edition version of their EP featuring this song with official Jujutsu Kaisen alternate cover art. Number 64. Gege never anticipated Inumaki being so popular, and to this day isn't quite sure where that popularity comes from. Because they were never expecting them to be so popular, they never intended to dig deeper into their character. And this is why we haven't learned much more about his sorcerer family or anything like that. Number 65. Sukuna never had a family or any children in his past. However, he did have his loyal subordinate, Urarume. Their relationship apparently began because Sukuna was quite the fan of eating people. However, cooking them wasn't his strong suit. Udarume just happened to not only be a powerful sorcerer, but also an amazing cook. And it just so happened they had a unique talent and experience cooking people. So that's mainly why Sakuna kept them around. Number 66. 
Toji ended up becoming a much more popular character in recent times. And with their first appearance in the anime coming up, I have no doubt their popularity will skyrocket even further. A few fun facts about them would be that the scar on their lip was given to them as a child, when their abusive family threw them into a disciplinary pit of cursed spirits. And when it comes to their type of woman, it's simply someone who can financially support them. In fact, they generally just went from woman to woman for financial support until they met Megumi's mother. They would still take jobs on the side during this time, but would quickly spend the massive amounts of money they acquired from them. Number 67. Miguel was noted by Gege to be the MVP of the Night Parade of 100 Demons, which is surprising when you see the extra fight scenes they added in the movie for Volume Zero. My man got straight up disrespected. That said, in between the events of Volume Zero and Volume One, Miguel would be recruited as a Jujutsu Sorcerer by Gojo and accompany Yuta to Africa. The explicit details of their voyage aren't completely known, but as we recently found out within the manga, one of their objectives was to acquire more of the black rope that his clan took generations to weave. And unfortunately, there wasn't any of this rope left. Number 68. Noritoshi's appearance when using blood manipulation was meant to be loosely based on the Japanese comedian, Gorgeous. In initial design concepts, apparently it was an uncanny resemblance before Gege altered it a bit. However, during those initial stages, most people they got feedback from claimed it looked like they were a member of the band KISS instead. Number 69! Back in 2020, a Valentine's Day ranking was held for the characters in terms of romantic appeal. Gege admittedly forgot about the results until pretty much the end of the year, but I gotta say, their comments are sending me. Gojo ended up getting first, and automatically Gege is like, whatever. They're pretty content with Geto being in second. Megumi got third, and Gege's basically like, you need to work harder. Third isn't good enough for you. Yuji in fourth is just main character obligation, apparently. Then Nanami ended up in fifth, when in Gege's opinion, they should be in first. And I want to quickly jump down to ninth place, which is Maki, where Gege contemplates changing her hairstyle. The funny and ironic, but extremely sad thing about this comment would be that not even a few months after they dropped the results of this poll, they literally lit Maki on fire, which ended up changing her hairstyle as a result. So, foreshadowing, I guess. Then, another Valentine's Day ranking was held in 2021. And this time around, just like they wanted, Nanami ended up in first place. And better yet for Gege, Megumi moved up to second, which Gege even comments that he's now finally in proper standing. Gojo moved down to third, which Gege comments, You haven't died yet, huh? Their hate for Gojo cannot be understated. If you want to see the rest of the results for the 2021 poll, I'll pop them on the screen right now. Number 70. Hakari was actually present during the night parade of 100 demons. However, he was suspended directly afterwards, because apparently he had a disagreement with one of the more conservative members of the higher-ups and beat the piss out of them. I feel like not showing this is genuinely the one misstep with the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero movie, as they easily could have added this altercation as original content. Additionally, the outfit he's wearing during his official debut is based on the outfit worn by Tyler Durden from Fight Club. Number 71. Within the manga, there are a few things Gege draws differently every time they draw them. A couple examples would be the length of Maki's ponytail and the shape of Nobara's hammer. If you ever do a reread or maybe read the manga for the first time, pay attention and it'll start being hard not to notice. Number 72. Shoko is the heaviest drinker in the series, followed closely by Nanami as the second heaviest drinker. Number 73. Mai's handgun is a Colt Python which is based on City Hunter's protagonist, Ryu Seba's choice of handgun. Number 74. There is technically an official Jujutsu Kaisen live action. In the live action ad, SoftBank's dog mascot is dressed up as Gojo, which was done as a collaboration to cross-promote Jujutsu Kaisen Zero coming out that December in Japan, along with promote SoftBank's AR and VR apps featuring Jujutsu Kaisen characters. Number 75. When asked about Nobara's ideal type of man, Gege said it was Oda Nobunaga. It's still unknown if this is a jab at their former editor, a joke, or if they were dead serious about this. Alright, here's the deal. Ever since I tasted these fingers, I've been craving these puppies non-stop. So naturally, I had to go out and hunt for more, but... 
just eating these things outright, that's not gonna do. So instead, I got a little crafty and I transformed them into my very own G Fuel flavor. I call this flavor Fingered, inspired by Sakuna. That way I can get my fix and be ready to gain at peak performance with the perfect amount of caffeine, cursed energy, and no sugar. Now, unfortunately, you might not be able to buy this one on the official G Fuel website, but there's tons of other great flavors you can try. One of my other favorites is Cherry Limeade. And when you do get yourself some G Fuel, make sure to use code 2SPOOKY so that you can get 10 to 30% off your order. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna go get fingered, gamers. See you later. Number 76. Hanami does speak in Japanese. However, within the anime, their speech is played in reverse to achieve that voice effect. Number 77. When asked about the prison realm, Gege explained that physical time doesn't flow there. Therefore, individuals trapped there don't have to eat or do things like use the bathroom. They then went on to explain that apparently, Jujutsu sorcerers insert special bugs into their stomachs when they're on long-term missions that make it so they don't have to eat or use the bathroom when those necessities are hard to come by. This is something they wish they would have explained within the manga, and generally speaking, the idea was inspired from the Matrix. Number 78. In Volume Extras, Gege provided the theme songs for some of the characters. Yuji's theme songs are Heart Nihai wo Sukite by 9mm Parabellum Bullet, and Itsuka Dokoka De by Kuchiroto. Sakuna's theme songs are Saint by Marilyn Manson and Day Scanner by Suzumu Mirasawa. Nobara's theme songs are Seishun Kyosukoku by Sunny Day Service and Ano di Pato by Natsuko Nishoku. Gojo's theme songs are Mata Minu Asani by Asian Kung Fu Generation and Shame on Me by Avicii. Nanami's theme songs are Yura Yura Teikoku de Kangichu by Yura Yura Teikoku and Saboten Record by Fuji Fabric. Ichiji's theme songs are Do Na Chen Dayo by Yasuyuki Okamura and Spy by Nokiyuri Makihara. Geto's theme songs are Paradiso by Pika no Jak and Come Back Home by Two Door Cinema Club. And finally, Megumi's theme songs are Haku Jitsumo by Uchujin and Island in the Sun by Weezer. What's with these homies dissing my girl? Why do they get in front? Woo -woo -woo. Number 79. The only reason Maki wears different glasses from the ones she wore in Volume Zero is because Geto smashed her original pair, so she simply had to get new ones. Number 80. Dagon was notably based on the H.P. Lovecraft short story, also titled Dagon, which is about the Mesopotamian and ancient Canaanite fish god, so to speak. Number 81. Gege's biggest regret with Yunpei would be that they didn't write more scenes showing their kindness. Gege explained that his fate was already decided, so they instead decided to focus hard on his troubled side to get to that point. As a result of this comment, the anime did feature an original scene in episode 10, depicting just that. Number 82. Once upon a time, Gege also directly disproved two popular fan theories, the first being that Yuji's mother was actually Yuki, based on the markings under her eyes. Gege explained that those were simply bags under her eyes and nothing more, and they planned to reveal more information about Yuji's mother at a later time, which came to fruition just like they said it would. The second popular theory was that Yuji's actual innate ability was memory manipulation, as both Toto and Choso experienced false memories with Yuji inserted into their heads after fighting him. Gege explained that those false memories were more like intrusive thoughts or random imaginations experienced by both Toto and Choso, with no specific reason behind it. So I guess they're both just a little crazy when it comes to Yuji, and there's nothing else to it. Number 83. When developing Gojo and coming up with his abilities, Gege decided to give him Infinity and Infinite Void. But a problem arose. That problem being that Gege had the general concept in mind for both abilities, but they didn't exactly know how either of them worked in the slightest. After the manga started gaining a lot of popularity and they had to actually show these abilities in action, they decided to research the concept as much as possible, and then went on to demonstrate it and explain it to the best of their ability. To this day, they're still unsure about some of the finer details. Number 84. The song Lost in Paradise by Ali was written specifically to be the first ending for the Jujutsu Kaisen anime. The band itself was formed in Shibuya, and they grew up reading the Shonen Jump magazine, listing Jujutsu Kaisen as their favorite. Therefore, when writing the song, it was written as a big thank you to Jump for their influence on them over the years. 
The song ended up being a massive success on streaming platforms. However, in May of 2021, you might have noticed that the song just disappeared off streaming platforms for about half a year, to many fans' dismay. The reason for this was because their drummer was arrested for fraud, prompting the band to pull the song from streaming platforms and kick them out of the band. Once the legal situation was settled, the song was returned to streaming platforms everywhere. Number 85 Spoiler for Season 2 of the anime in this fact if you haven't read the manga, so skip to this time code to avoid it. Just saying, I warned ya. Nanami's death during the Shibuya incident was decided during the early planning stages of the arc. This was very bittersweet for Gege in particular, as Nanami is not only one of their favorite characters, but they also find them quite enjoyable and easy to draw. However, personal bias aside, Gege realized that Nanami had hit a bit of a full stop in terms of his character arc and development, and felt there wasn't much more they could do with him as a result. This is even sadder when you read in the Jujutsu Kaisen data book that Nanami wants to get married and settle down, but not while he's working as a Jujutsu sorcerer. <coughs> Number 86. The three scrolls behind Ghetto in Volume 0 translate to the following messages. Death to the fools. Punishment to the weak. Love to the strong. According to Gege, these are meant to be a reference to Taite Kubo's first serialization, Zombie Powder, although they weren't able to expand on this reference as much as they wanted to when initially sneaking it in there. Number 87. Nobara's hair is actually dyed that color, and instead, it's naturally dark brown. Number 88. Out of all the known Jujutsu sorcerers, there are currently only four that fall under the classification of special grade, those being Ghetto, Gojo, Yuki, and Yuta. That said, it's no secret that Gojo is unanimously considered the strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer, but the second strongest was recently revealed to be Yuta. However, there is still one individual who is said to rival both of them, and could therefore be even stronger than Gojo under the right circumstances. That being Fumihiko Takaba, because of his innate ability, Comedian, which takes anything that Fumihiko finds funny and makes it a reality. Considering comedy is completely subjective, this could be an extremely catastrophic ability that not even Gojo could compete with. Number 89. Another spoiler alert, so skip ahead to this time code if you want to avoid it. It's no secret anymore that Ghetto is not actually Ghetto, and their body was instead taken over by Kenjaku. The simple reason as to how Kenjaku was able to steal Ghetto's body was because Ghetto was not cremated and they only took his body because it was merely the only convenient body available at the time. The reason Kenjaku doesn't attempt to just take Gojo's body is because Gojo is theoretically unbeatable, and therefore it's impossible to even try. And the reason they didn't steal Toji's body is because there was a chance Toji's heavenly restriction would interfere with Kenjaku's abilities. Otherwise, Toji was Kenjaku's second choice had Geto not worked out. Number 90. Kokichi named his mech, Ultimate Mechamaru, after a character or mecha within one of his favorite anime. We know that many of the anime that are mentioned in Jujutsu Kaisen also exist within the real world. However, unless Ultimate Mechamaru comes from some really obscure anime that already exists that we just haven't figured out yet, it appears to be from an original anime that only exists within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Number 91. In Shoko's character profile, it mentioned that she quit smoking five years ago. However, she recently started smoking again as of chapter 113. Number 92. The OST for the anime consisted of three composers, those being Hiroaki Tsutsumi, Yoshimasa Terui, and Alyssa Okehazama, with Yoshiki Kobayashi overseeing everything as the music producer. When the animation staff first met with Gege about the tone of the anime, Gege actually suggested they go for a sound similar to Billie Eilish, with director Park later deciding they additionally wanted a mixture of hip-hop and rock music included as well. So each composer was chosen to meet a specific need. Tsutsumi was particularly great with rock music, and had a lot of experience with other types of background music as well, and therefore became the pseudo-leader of the team. Terui was notably very distinctive with their use of riffs, rhythms, and melodies, bringing forth a very unique sound for the whole project. And finally, Okehazama is a master with synthesizers, leading to a real dream team. Generally speaking, they each wrote their own distinct tracks, but there are a few where they all co-wrote together. Terui will be returning for the second season, this time being the sole composer. Number 93. Out of the character heights that we know, 
The tallest Jujutsu Kaisen character so far was Hanami, coming in at 7 foot 2 inches tall or 220 centimeters tall, while the shortest is Momo, coming in at 4 feet 11 inches tall or 150 centimeters tall. Number 94. Gojo was officially sealed for 1,189 days in real time. Number 95. Shingo Yamashita was the mastermind behind both the first and second opening. Yamashita has been making waves with his incredibly unique animation for years now. You probably even recognize some of his work and don't even realize it. The cool thing is, Yamashita was asked directly by Gege to animate the openings for Jujutsu Kaisen before the anime was even a concept yet. Apparently, Yamashita was at an event showing off some of his work, and a person came up to him and introduced themselves as the author of Jujutsu Kaisen, along with bringing volumes 1 and 2 for Yamashita to read. Gege told him that if their series ever got an anime adaptation, they wanted him to animate the openings. Apparently, after this encounter, almost two years would pass, and out of the blue, Mappa hit up Yamashita requesting him for the job, just like Gege wanted, and Yamashita just had to accept. Number 96. Back in 2021, with Gege's televised interview for the Mondo Kobayashi program, it's quite possible Gege straight up spoiled what was going to happen with Yuji, Megumi, and Sukuna within the recent chapters. I won't spoil this for anime-only watchers, of course, but people were asking about Sukuna's interest in Megumi back from the beginning of the manga when Sukuna ripped out Yuji's heart. To which there was just a long censored segment of Gege speaking, which was never uncensored, followed by everyone present laughing. Which led everyone to think he spoiled something big, but just how big wasn't known until now. Number 97. If Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical School hadn't ended up becoming a serialization, Gege mentioned that they had planned on writing idol manga going forward. This was namely because of all the struggles they experienced with their editor while developing the concept for Volume Zero, and wanted to write something less serious afterwards as a result. While not confirmed, Gege's desire to write an idol manga could be what inspired Toto's love for the idol, Nobuko Takada. Because if they weren't going to get the chance to write their idol manga, they could at least sprinkle a bit of idol culture into their current serialization. Number 98. In addition to the last fact, when asked what Gege's future plans are in an interview, they stated that their ultimate goal is to write two to three successful works and increase their overall value as a mangaka. So with Jujutsu Kaisen being their first successful work, we can expect at least one or two more out of Gege before they eventually retire. With that in mind, maybe we will see that idol manga from them after all. Number 99. I never would have predicted this collaboration in a million years, but... From February 15th to March 15th of 2022, PUBG Mobile had an official collaboration with Jujutsu Kaisen, where you could unlock skins for Yuji, Megumi, Nobara, and Gojo, along with various weapon skins. Low-key, I would predict that Jujutsu Kaisen characters will end up in Fortnite at some point, but maybe having a collaboration with PUBG means that they can't appear in other Battle Royale games or something? I don't know. I guess we'll see. But I'm predicting it now, Jujutsu Kaisen x Fortnite. It's coming. I tell you what. Number 100. When asked in an interview what the message of Jujutsu Kaisen is, Gege stated, If there was one thing to mention, it's that no one holds the ultimate truth. Both the good guys and the bad guys. Some seek to kill the hero out of sheer selfishness, but others are brought to this decision by logical reasoning. If no one is really right, then no one is wrong either. Each character is guided by their own ethics. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, Number 101. For the final fact, let's touch upon the future of the series. Gege has gone on record to say that the series' main story beats are completely planned out, which includes the ending of the series. That said, they aren't entirely sure how everything is going to happen in between to get to those main events. In the past, Gege has also mentioned that the fate of Megumi and Yuji has already been decided. But the fate of Sukuna is still completely up in the air. Now, to make matters worse, in December of 2022 for Jump Festa 23, Gege said, If you accompany me for up to one more year, probably, I will be very happy, insinuating that the series is likely in its final stretch, and could be ending as soon as this year. Although, it's more likely we'll see an ending near the middle of 2024, the way the story is currently progressing. Plus, anytime a mangaka mentions a story potentially ending in X amount of time, it usually takes a bit longer than that. So moral of this fact, Jujutsu Kaisen is ending a lot sooner than you probably realized. 
But there you have it everybody, 101 facts about Jujutsu Kaisen. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, make sure to drop a like. While you're at it, be sure to comment what anime you'd like to learn 101 facts about next, and subscribe with those notifications on so you don't miss it. I had a lot of fun making this video, and now that I'm officially caught up, I would like to make some more content on the series in the future, so stick around for more. All of my social media, including Twitter and Twitch, will be in the description below, so be sure to check all of that out. And I just want to say I've got a lot of big plans in the works, some of which are going to take a lot of work on my part, so thank you guys for sticking with me. And I hope to show you some really cool stuff very soon. But regardless, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all soon with the next video.